1967's The Graduate is a perfect time capsule of suburban life in the 60s and the pressures that affluent parents can subject to their aimlessly adrift children. Haven't you been? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Excuse me, honey, I'd just like to check something on the car for a minute. Oh. Director Mike Nichols perfectly guides this masterful film, which follows the life of Benjamin Braddock as he co-pilots with his hormones and life decisions, being seduced by a beautiful older married woman. Oh, I guess this isn't the bathroom, is it? but eventually falling head over heels in love with her daughter, Elaine. It's no wonder this film became the highest grossing of 1967. And by the third year of its release, The Graduate was the third highest grossing movie of all time to that date. But did you ever catch a certain Jaw star in one of his earliest ever roles? And do you know if it was Butch Cassidy or the Sundance Kid who nearly nabbed Hoffman's role? If only he could have persuaded Nichols that he did have trouble with the ladies. Uh, doesn't he look to you like the kind of guy who has to fight them off? Yes, he does. I'm Nostalgic Nick with Do You Remember? And today we're going back to the 60s to check back in on the cast of The Graduate. If you don't mind, please smash that thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any deep dives like this. Dustin Hoffman. Benjamin Braddock is a recent college graduate with no aim or goals in life, just wandering through until an emotion takes hold and shows him a path. First lust, then love. When Dustin Hoffman showed up at producer Joseph Levine's office for a casting interview, Levine mistook him for a window cleaner. So Hoffman, in character, cleaned a window. That's the kind of actor he is, studying at the actor's studio and grabbing a hold of method acting. He worked mostly on the stage before landing his breakthrough role as Ben, which now gave him two things, one good, one bad. An Academy Award nomination, good, and intense fame. Bad. As Mike Nichols looked at young Hoffman's explosion onto everyone's radars, he saw a parallel to his character in The Graduate, being pushed into a direction he didn't want. And despite the general positive feedback, many critics thought that Hoffman didn't have much of an acting range and couldn't portray a wide variety of characters. So two years later, when he was offered the incredible role of Ratso in Midnight Cowboy, he used it as a chance to prove his critics wrong. And Dustin did just that. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm walking here. Receiving his second Oscar nomination. In 1976, he starred alongside Robert Redford in All the President's Men about the Watergate scandal. But it would be 1979's Kramer vs. Kramer that helped the actor win his first Oscar. Then 1988's Rain Man with Tom Cruise proved another triumph and Hoffman's second Oscar win. Today, Dustin is in his mid 80s, but he's not slowing down. His next film is Sam and Kate. And this will be really fun, so keep it on your radar. As Dustin plays Bill, Sam's father, and Sam is played by Dustin's real son, Jake Hoffman. Anne Bancroft. Mrs. Robinson, AKA the leg, belonging to the older married woman who seduces the young Ben. Oh my Christ. If you won't sleep with me this time, I want you to know that you can call me up anytime you want and we'll make some kind of an arrangement. <laughs> and also warns him to stay away from her daughter, Elaine, which proves to become a larger problem. Bancroft began working in 1951, booking her first major role in the Marilyn Monroe led Don't Bother to Knock in 1952. And over the next five years, she'd book 14 films, like 1954's Gorilla at Large and 1955's New York Confidential. But but this could be her best known role, even by that time, and it gave her her third Oscar nom. She was nominated once again in 1977 for The Turning Point, and then in 1985 for Agnes of God. But her lone Oscar win was her first nomination, back in 1963 for her incredible performance in The Miracle Worker. Her final appearance was as herself in a 2004 episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. She had been working on a project called Delgo, which was released posthumously in 2008. As Anne Bancroft sadly died in June 2005. She was 73 years old, and this news shocked many of her close friends, not knowing that she had cancer. Delgo was dedicated to Bancroft in her memory. Catherine Ross. 
Elaine is the daughter of Mrs. Robinson, who Benjamin later falls for. Ross began booking roles on TV shows like Gunsmoke and the Alfred Hitchcock Hour through the 60s. He's dead. Last night when I covered him, he was singing. She made her film debut with 1965 Shenandoah, playing the daughter-in-law of Jimmy Stewart. She was also in the 1968 movie Hellfighters, playing the legendary John Wayne's daughter. And the following year, she was a part of another gunfighting classic, 1969's Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And I'll go ahead and answer one of our trivia questions now. It was Robert Redford who desperately wanted to be Braddock in The Graduate. He had already been directed by Mike Nichols in his first Broadway play, Barefoot in the Park. But Nichols told Redford, quote, Bob, look in the mirror. Can you honestly imagine a guy like you having difficulty seducing a woman? Heck no, he is way too good looking. Another of Ross's most well-known roles was 1975's The Stepford Wives. The 80s brought more great roles, like acting with her future husband, Sam Elliott, in some TV movies, 1982's Travis McGee, and 1986's Houston, The Legend of Texas. Today, she is 82, and we last saw her in the 2019 film Attachments. Catherine prefers to live a quiet life with Sam on their ranchito in Malibu. William Daniels. Mr. Braddock is Ben's dad, a rich attorney. And Daniels has some really great scenes, especially forcing Ben to don scuba attire in the family swimming pool. <laughs> and it better work, or I'm out over 200 bucks. Okay then, let's hear it now. William's first motion picture was as a school principal in the 1963 film Ladybug, Ladybug. He also starred as John Adams in the Broadway musical 1776, and then appearing in the film version in 1970. A half million souls in chains, and Dr. Franklin calls it a luxury. But somehow his voice may be more famous than his face, as he provided the voice of Kit in the Knight Rider series and all its other appearances. I am the voice of Knight Industry 2000's microprocessor. K-I-T-T -T for easy reference. But at that same time as Knight Rider, both his face and his voice were saving lives on the program Saint Elsewhere. Daniels was nominated for five Emmys for the role, taking home two awards. And younger viewers certainly remember Daniels as another principal, this time Mr. Feeney in Boy Meets World. Today, he is 95 years old, and impressively, he was just in the project Super Intelligence in 2020, once again providing the voice of Kit. Murray Hamilton. Mr. Robinson is the husband of Mrs. Robinson, just an innocent bystander caught up in the whole scandal. Not a ton of screen time, but he's perfect in the role. You fucking crazy punk! Hamilton stepped onto the scene in the 40s. His best known film was 1959's Anatomy of a Murder. But you probably remember him from 1975's hit thriller Jaws. For Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. It's gonna be one of the best summers we've ever had. But no, this was not the Jaws star I was teasing in the intro. We'll get to him soon. Hamilton had a lot of TV success too, from Love and Marriage back in 1959 to playing Captain Rutherford T. Grant in BJ and the Bear in 1981. But the 80s were slower for him as his health took a sharp decline. And Murray Hamilton sadly died in 1986 at the age of 63 from lung cancer. One of his final credits was a season one guest star on The Golden Girls. Elizabeth Wilson. Mrs. Braddock is your typical mom, very concerned that her son is just laying around and not doing anything productive. You know, the usual. Well, when did you two talk this over? We haven't. You haven't? Elizabeth Wilson first began acting in the 40s and made her screen debut reprising her original stage role in the 1955 film adaptation of Picnic. She was an incredible character actress, appearing in over 30 films and many Broadway shows, including 1963's Hitchcock Led The Birds, 1971's Little Murders, and 1994's Quiz Show. And she appeared in some of the best shows too, like Dark Shadows and All in the Family. Her final role was in 2012, playing the role of Mrs. Roosevelt in Hyde Park on Hudson. She died in 2015 at the age of 94 at her home. Norman Fell. 
Mr. McCleary is the boarding house operator, which is pretty fantastic for all you three's company fans. Now, there's no need for the cops or anything. All right, boys, you can all go back to your rooms now. As McCleary is a precursor to the irritable and oblivious Mr. Roper, and Fell continued his Mr. Roper to a spinoff called The Ropers for a short while. You see, the contract for The Ropers included an option to return to Three's company if the spinoff failed to make one season. Well, The Ropers aired for one and a half seasons, and Fell was permanently replaced by the masterful Don Knotts. Luckily, Fell already had a lot of success. One of my favorites being his part in Steve McQueen's Bullet. Now listen to me, Lieutenant. Norman Fell passed away in 1998 at the age of 74. But Norman leads us right to our Jaws trivia. Because when Elaine tracks down Ben in his gloomy room and she screams, the guy behind Norman Fell who says, Shall I get the cops? What? I'll get the cops. Well, that's a very young Richard Dreyfus in one of his earliest film roles. For reference, American Graffiti, which we have a great cast then and now for too, didn't happen for another six years. So come on, let's toast to a wonderful film with, I think, the greatest soundtrack of all time. So what's your favorite scene from this classic? Is this the best film from the 1960s or the best soundtrack of all time? Let me know in the comments. I want to read your thoughts. If you enjoyed our video, smash the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a memory. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.